This Family Life News Podcast is made possible by the support of listeners like you. It's staycation destinations on Family Life. On today's trip, we see how New York's forests provided the foundation for American society. Each week all summer long, we map out a unique opportunity for you to discover somewhere unique in Pennsylvania or New York, fairly close to home and fairly affordable. I'm Greg Gillespie, and today our staycation destination takes us to a celebration of sawmills about halfway between Albany and Binghamton. Hello, my name is Ryan Jones, and I am the education coordinator at Hanford Mills Museum. What is the celebration that that part of New York, it's big business and has been for a lot of centuries now. What is it that you celebrate at Hanford Mills? So Hanford Mills Museum is a great place to think about uh, work and labor and industrialization, um, especially as it happened on the uh, expanding frontier of New York State in the period uh, after the American Revolution and in that period known as the Early Republic. This was an area that had to be opened up to expanding settlement. And when you think about the expansion of settlement, you have to think about being able to clear land for farms. And when you clear that land, you think about turning those trees into the lumber that you're going to use to build your homestead. And so this was just one more stop on that westward expansion from the eastern seaboard into western New York and the interior of the country. And and here at Hanford Mills Museum, we look at a very specific time period from roughly 1860 to about the mid-1960s. Now, the, the mill dates to 1846. The Hanford family was the main proprietor here from 1860 to the 1940s. And then uh, for the last two decades or so of business from uh, the 1940s, to the mid-1960s when the mill was turned into a museum. It was sold to a newly formed not-for-profit corporation in the early 1970s, which is what gives us the Living History Museum we know as Hanford Mills today. I love the way you describe that, Ryan. If people are interested in a wide variety of angles, you kind of cover those. There's, There's history, there's local business. There's the kind of micro blue collar jobs and also the economic development. And there's the artistry of turning a tree into a magnificent construction. We engage with a wide variety of visitors. They can be, just this morning, we had uh, a small tour um, with a couple of young kids and I geared the tour very much for them. We can have big families. Uh, We can have folks who have been retired from an industrial type job like this, who like to come back and and reminisce, if you will. They like to see the machines running. They like to relive their days of maybe working on a sawmill or uh, running a steam engine like we have. And so on site, we we cater to a wide variety of visitors, but a big part of, of what we do and a big part of our engagement um, as well is our off-season educational outreach. And that's where we get to uh, reach kids in 19 different school districts with two different uh, programs that we are a part of. One of them is our watershed outreach, um, and the other one is CROP, the Creating Rural Opportunities Partnership. And so in Otsego, and Delaware and Schoharie and Green Counties, we get to see so many different kids. We get to bring the story of the mill to them. We get to talk about renewable energy. We get to talk about water as a natural resource. We get to talk about trees as a natural resource, but also our relationship to the trees, our relationship to nature, our relationship to forest habitats, and how we live in harmony with the, with the world around us. And so we have an opportunity to reach many, many people along many different themes and subjects. That really is fabulous to do that outreach, whether it's school groups or I could see young families who are traveling for the summer looking for a a different kind of place to go that uh, you really do gear that to the people that come in, whether it's an old retired woodworker or a young family with three kids. 
How did you get involved with your interest in this? My research interest is uh, partly in early American political economy, um, early American industrialization, uh, especially the iron and steel industry, which was a major industry in in early early New York. I enjoy the the way that you can see how the character of New Yorkers and the American people was very much tied to the development of its economic system. Would we be a self-sufficient land of farmers who only manufactured for what we needed to maintain us in that agrarian lifestyle? Or would we become a nation of manufacturers? And how would that influence our social relationships, our political relationships, our economic relationships? And so being able to come to a place like this, that was a very important part of when you think of that, that, that westward progression of the settlement of the country, but also it was a big part of our development as a country, our national identity, being able to produce for ourselves and to be able to develop this very familiar capitalist economic system that we know today. Let me give you a sample of the sound of the invention that powered the sawmill starting in 1926. It's this big, giant water wheel, still available for people to see. We're talking with Ryan Jones. He is the education coordinator at the Hanford Mills Museum. It's located essentially halfway between Albany and Binghamton in East Meredith, New York. As we look at the summer opportunities, I know you've got a series of exploration days that is going on. What happens at Exploration Days at Hanford Mills? So our Exploration Days are themed very specifically to what we talk about uh, with our interpretation here on site and also uh, very much with uh, what we think about when we uh, put together our school programs. So our first Exploration Day of the season uh, was just a couple weeks ago, and we called that Let's Grow. And that exploration day really leaned into the idea of pollinators and agriculture and native ecosystems, especially as it pertains to sustainability um, and renewable resources. Um, Our next one that we have coming up is called Dairy at the Mill. This one is going to be on Saturday, July 20th, very near to National Ice Cream Day. And I mention that because we are going to be churning a homemade vanilla ice cream off of one of our steam engines. Uh, That will be an opportunity for us to really explore the connections that uh, historically the business had to agriculture and dairy farming in Delaware County, where we really get to play up that side of our interpretation, but also have vendors and exhibitors on site who can also really talk about their connections to that as well. And we can and we can praise the uh, the agriculture and dairy farming that still goes on in Delaware County today. We have our Metal at the Mill Exploration Day coming up in September, featuring the Dan Ryan Memorial Antique Engine Jamboree, which will see members from the community uh, and beyond bringing their tractors and their engines and their doodle bugs and all kinds of machines that they will be demonstrating and exhibiting for visitors. That is a great day. That's one of our best attended events. Finally, in October, we have our Woodsman's Exploration Day, and this is where we get to celebrate the woodworking side of our interpretation here, uh, from cutting rough lumber on the sawmill to turning it into finished products in the woodworking shops. We have demonstrations by the SUNY Cobble Skill Woodsman team, and I'm really going to uh, try to expand Uh, the theme of this day to not so much talk about our relationship to the forest as we extract for that uh, for that natural resource, but also how we live in relationship um, to our forested spaces for recreation and conservation and and preservation purposes as well. So those are the exploration days that we have uh, planned for this season. And we are very excited about uh, everything that we have to offer and everything that the visitors are going to get to experience when they join us on those days. Are those days something you need to get tickets in advance or make reservations, or can people just show up for for those? Everybody can just show up. They run from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., and so those days are by donation only so that we can encourage as many people to come as possible. 
Ryan, tell us the what's and when's and where's of the Hanford Mills Museum. When are you open? How do people come find you? Hanford Mills Museum is open from mid-May through mid-October, Wednesday through Sunday. And we run four scheduled tour times a day, 10, 30, 12, 1, 30, and 3. We are about 10, 15 minutes outside of Oneonta. We have a pavilion where families can come and they can spend the day taking a tour, having lunch, enjoying this incredibly picturesque setting that we are in, but also know that if they'd like to make a a day-long outing, we're very near Oneonta, where they can plan an entire day's worth of activities and, and hopefully make Hanford Mills Museum a part of that. Ryan Jones is Education Coordinator at Hanford Mills Museum in East Meredith, New York. More details are on our website. Thanks for coming along for Staycation Destinations. I'm Greg Gillespie. Buckle up and enjoy your journeys. Thank you for listening to this Family Life News Podcast. If you've been encouraged by what you've heard, please share it with others and click the subscribe button to automatically receive future episodes. Family Life is a listener-supported ministry. Podcasts like this are made possible by your financial partnership. Find out more at familylife.org.